Thanks for coming. I'm an old geek. I've been playing video games for a long time. Um, I started when my parents bought us an Atari 2600 in 1984. Um, over the past three decades of playing video games, I've killed so many things in video games. I've killed so many orcs and darkspawn and aliens and people. And some of those people, they deserved it. But some of them didn't. And that makes me wonder, why did I do that? When I, when I have a choice and I don't have to kill the person in the game, why did I go ahead and do it? I'm not a violent person in my everyday life. So why is it that when I play video games, I become this bloodthirsty, violent person? I wonder if, if it's ever weird, if it's ever wrong of me to do this. I am a philosopher, I am thinky, so I you know, tend to go in these directions. Um, before I get into my argument, I want to preface with one thing. I am not actually asking a political question. Whenever we have debates over violence in video games, we tend to go really quickly toward the political question of um, can we restrict games, can we ban them, can we censor them. It becomes a question about the First Amendment and civil liberties. It becomes a question about what can we control what people do when they play video games. I'm not interested in that. That's not the question that I'm asking. I'm not asking about do we have the legal right to play whatever. I'm asking more of a moral question. Like, when I am playing, is there anything strange about what I do? Typically, we like to think that moral and political questions go hand in hand, or that the law follows morality most of the time, but these things come apart as well really easily. There are things that are um, immoral to do, but perfectly legal. For instance, think of cheating on a lover, at least somebody that you're not married to. You have no legal obligation to that person, Cheating on a lover is not something you can ever be sued for. You can't go to prison. You won't get arrested for it. It's perfectly legal. But if you do it often, we would still think you're a jerk. We would still think there's something morally wrong about that. What I'm interested in is forget about the legal question of what, what does the First Amendment get me? What can I do in games? When I am doing something in a game, how do I morally engage with this? And is it right for me to do that? Um, you can imagine that there's a standard reply, that when I ask, is it ever weird for me to do something bad in a video game, the standard reply would be something like, obviously not. It can't be wrong because it's a game, because it's fiction, because it's just, it doesn't exist in a way. Nobody's actually harmed when I kill anything in a video game, so who cares? And yeah, I think that's probably right. I didn't feel a lot of guilt when I killed all those many dark spawn the many games that I've played. Uh, but sometimes it actually did make me a little anxious and make me think, eh, that was weird. Why did I want to do that? Why should I do this? Um, the way that I think of video games generally is that I think of them as a kind of fantasy, or it's a way to enjoy a fantasy. It's a way to engage with a fantasy. And most of the time when we play games, what we do is we imagine a fantasy where I'm the hero and I save the day. I'm a noble army of one, yay for me. And even in those cases where I do bad things in games, where I, I make the bad moral choice, then what I do is I do this little psychological trick that I've learned that most gamers are really good at. I do this little psychological trick of bracketing, where I say, I can do this thing in the game because I know that's not me. In reality, this is another person. There's the game person and then there's me in reality. So I can do bad things in games and that's fine because we're two different things. Great, so it's a fantasy. But that, you know, I'm a philosopher, I get thinky about things like this and it makes me wonder, is it always okay for me to fantasize? Are there any fantasies that are wrong? Is it actually sometimes morally wrong for me to fantasize about something? Let me give you, I'm sure there's, there's a standard response to that as well. The standard response would again be obviously not, right? Because it happens in your head. It's not real, it's a fantasy. How can you legislate what goes on in my head? Nobody's being harmed, so it's really none of your business. And to a degree, I think that's right. Nobody wants to live in a world of Orwellian thought police. Right? But Remember, when we talk about Orwellian worlds of thought police, that we're talking about legislating again. We slip really easily into the First Amendment question. 
of what legally do I have the right to do. I'm not asking that question. I'm asking, even though you have the right to fantasize about whatever you want, is it ever wrong? Imagine this case. Imagine that you have an associate, somebody that you're not really close to, but you know them, and you accidentally somehow get hold of their diary. And bad person that you are, you look in their diary. And you find out that this person regularly has the, enjoys this really dark, twisted fantasy about you. I would be freaked out by that. I might think you have the legal right to do whatever you want in your head, but I don't want to be your friend anymore. That would freak me out. I wonder if there are other cases where actually we cross a line in our fantasies, where it's not right for me to fantasize about that thing. There are some things that I ought not to fantasize about. I shouldn't fantasize about murder. I shouldn't fantasize about rape. I shouldn't fantasize about pedophilia. Those are terrible things to even fantasize about. So what happens when I play games? Is it ever morally wrong for me to use a game as a way of fantasizing about something? What I want to know is, where do I draw the line? Let me give you one case where it feels to me like, here I draw a line. Um, Anders Breivik, he's a mass murderer. In 2011 in Norway, he killed 77 people. Um, many of those people were high school age kids that were on a, uh, in a summer camp. He claims that he prepared himself for his attack by playing video games. He claims that he prepared himself for his attack by playing first-person shooters, that it was a really good way for him to improve his hand-eye coordination, and that you can imagine as well that it was a really good way for him to just psych himself up to prepare himself for this mass murder that he was plotting. At that point, I want to draw the line and say what he's doing with the game is weird and wrong. That's not what I do when I play games. And I bet most of the people in the room probably play games at some point or other. It's funny that many of us don't think of ourselves as gamers, but I bet if I looked at your phone right now, there'd be a game on your phone. So I call you a gamer. I bet most of you play games. And most of you, when you play games, you imagine yourself to be a hero. Or when you make a bad choice in a game, you do that little thing where you bracket it off. And you say, I can do this because this is another person, and it's not me that wants to do this in the game. For Anders Breivik, he did in the game exactly what he wants to do in life. For him, it's different. He's doing something different in the game from what you and I are doing. You and I are fantasizing about he being heroes, or we're bracketing it out. He's fantasizing about actually being a mass murderer that what he does in the game is what he wants to see in reality. And that, I feel like, is where the problem lies. Or that's where I want to draw the line. Um, it's wrong to fantasize about murder. It's wrong to fantasize about rape. It's wrong to fantasize about pedophilia. And it doesn't matter if the thing that you're using to engage with that fantasy is a video game or not. In that case, it could be anything. It could be a video game. It could be plays. It could be a movie, it could be a novel, it doesn't matter. The thing itself, the object is not the problem. This is one of the main things that I want to stress. The object is not the problem. It's not the game that makes you a bad person. It's not the novel or the play or the movie or whatever. It's what you do with it. Anders Breivik is doing something totally different from what you and I do with it. He's enjoying a kind of fantasy that you and I would be disgusted by, I hope. You and I would be disgusted. Um, when we typically address this, uh, when we typically think of this issue, the, u the usual way that we think about it is first, in political terms, what can we legally do? And second, we fixate on the object. We fixate on um, what the designer did when they created the game. That's a question of what does the game allow me to do? But I think that's a mistake. I hear parents often, when I tell them about my research, they often tell me about the awful games that their kids are playing. And I often ask, why do you let your kids play them then? Um, but they often tell me about the, game, the things that are in the games that bug them. And I tell them, that's not what you worry about. What you worry about is, why does your kid want to do that? If your kid wants to do that because your kid likes imagining themselves as being a hero, or they like playing with moral ambiguity and they think that's really fascinating and it's a safe place to play with moral amb ambiguity, then good for them. Keep at it. If your kid is Hunter Spreyavik, then you have a conversation. 
then at that point, something's up. So in the end, um, is it morally wrong to play violent video games? The short answer is not necessarily. It's not about the game at all. It's not really about the game. It's about the player. It's about what they do with it. At the point where the player is using the game to engage in a moral fantasy, something that they shouldn't fantasize about, something that they shouldn't develop a desire for, at that point they're doing something morally wrong. That, I think, is where we draw the line. Thank you.